Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing great. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this module that you're seeing here, which is an excavator arm mechanism. And um, this module is going to be built using the preprocessor software ENSA, which is this one. So here I have this module created. Uh, this software, if we if we search for ENSA Beta Chi, and then we have this first link, this is the software that I have used. This is a preprocessor software, which means that it can be used to create modules for many types of solvers, such as ENSYS, Abacus, Nastran, Elastina, Pancrash, and etc. In this case, we created this module for Abacus. Okay, so this module was created for Abacus and then we outputted the input file for Abacus and then we ran it using Abacus and then after running it, we got the results and post-processed in, uh, in Meta from Betakai. So Meta, Meta Betakai is the post processor software from Betakai. Okay, so basically here we can get the results of the analysis that was uh, run in many types of solvers, such as Abacus, Ensys, and etc. And we can uh, post-process these results, such as uh, plotting stress, string, displacement. So for example, I'm going to plot displacement here. You see that we have uh, the, the displacement distribution during this event okay so these are the softwares that were used in this tutorial and uh, well uh, this model is built using mainly rigid bodies and many types of connectors uh, so you see that in here we have the translator connectors to represent the hydraulic actuators that we would have here. Let me show you the CAD. Let me show you the, the CAD and hide the FE entity. So this is the CAD that I had used in this tutorial. I'm going to let the link to download this CAD in the description of this video, but basically this was obtained from GrabCAD. Okay, I just downloaded any CAD in GrabCAD that was related to an excavator arm and uh, so you see that we have the hydraulic actuators here right this was represented using the translator connectors that you see here this one this one this one okay we also had to use cartesian carbon connectors at the ends of the translator connectors which is another type of connector Okay, and uh, the explanation of uh, why we did it is in the following videos, because we actually do, uh, we create, the, I'm going to create this step, uh, this module step by step, okay, with you. Uh, we also use hinge connectors here, because you see that in this animation, there is this basis, let me deactivate this contour plot you see that there is this larger gear that rotates right so that's why we need a hinge connector here which is a, a type of connector that allows rotation about the local x-axis and you see that there is one interesting thing here that well there is a smaller gear that makes the largest gear rotate so in here we needed to use something something very interesting named as equation constraint so we um, correlated uh, the degree of freedom of two nodes one that is part of the largest gear and one that is part of the smallest gear so so that we are going to have the two gears rotating together like this okay so this is very interesting this is another thing that you're going to learn in this tutorial um, and also you're going to learn how to deal with rigid bodies in abacus well 
in ENSA to be solved in Abacus, right? So you see that in here we have uh, all these rigid bodies. We have a total of eight rigid bodies that are connected to each other by using many types of connectors as you saw. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. And let me explain to you why is it important to learn how to build a module like this. Because, well, besides of the fact that you're going to learn how to deal with many types of connectors, rigid bodies, um, you're going to also learn how to create modules to generate loads. Because these modules that are built using only rigid bodies are usually used for that. They are used to generate loads. Let me explain with an easier example which is this one here. You see that I have this cross card module here in ANSA. This is also to be solved in Abacus. I'm going to create tutorials related to this, to, to this module shortly. And uh, in this case, we have here only flexible bodies. Well, mostly flexible bodies. We have also some rigid bodies in some regions, but in this module, we have mostly flexible bodies so we have we have shell elements here for the chassis we have shell elements here for the front suspension components we are, we also have some uh, solid elements here in some regions for some bolts this model is pretty complex it has a bolt pretension it has uh, many things that are quite complex and hard to reach convergence this module is good when we want to to run um, uh, load cases maybe for example for a, an explicit dynamic analysis in which there is a great impact against something such as uh, the front eels reaching um, hitting a trench but if we wanted to create a module only to generate loads at each component of the front suspension for example uh, for this vehicle going through events that are not so harsh, such as uh, these going through a bump uh, at a velocity equals 20 kilometers per hour, for example, this is not so harsh, then we could build this same module only using rigid bodies. Okay, and then when we do this, um, basically, we are going to use uh, the same techniques that we learn in this module. We need to create many rigid bodies that are going to be connected using many types of connectors. You see that we, we have many types of connectors here uh, connecting these rigid bodies. We have a complex uh, connect circuit for the suspension. Um, and also for each rigid body, we have... Uh, concentrated mass entities to represent um, its inertia and rotary inertia. And, uh, well, in this module, the only thing that is not rigid um, are the tires, right? The tires need to be flexible. And by the way, I'm going to teach you also how to model tires. I intend to, to create a tutorial to teach you how to do this. It's pretty complex and it's really nice. Um, anyways, I'm not going to talk too much about it in this video. Uh, so, uh, this model is important because we can put this to go through a bump, for example, at a velocity equals 20 kilometers per hour. And then uh, throughout this event, we can extract a load history of each connector that we have. For, so, for example, we have uh, for this... Um, for this uh, upper control arm for the front suspension, we have this connector, this connector, and this connector. We can extract the loads generated during this event, and then we can analyze what is the most critical time for this event, and then we are going to get the combination of loads for this time, and then we can create a single component analysis of just this upper control arm. So we would do something like this. Here I have the, the upper control arm as a, a flexible body. I'm going to isolate it. 
I'm going to isolate most of uh, the parts. Yeah, okay, so here I have the upper control arm. Let me just isolate the upper control arm, which is this one, okay. So I could create a module that I would have only this component, and then I would apply uh, the loads generated by the, the analysis that has the full vehicle as rigid bodies. I would apply those loads here for the most critical moment. And then I would also use something uh, named as inertia relief. And then I would end, uh, perform a, a stress analysis on this component for this mo more critical moment. Okay, so, well, basically, that's how we use a, uh, a rigid body module. We usually use it uh, to, to, to generate loads so that we can perform the structure analysis on single components of this mechanism or structure. Okay, so, and also let me point out here that, well, why do we do this? Why don't we get this model here that has everything as flexible and why don't we put this model to go through a bump and then analyze the stress and strain generated in each component? Well, because a the, an explicit dynamic analysis can be very heavy, computationally heavy. The computational cost is pretty high if everything is flexible. And depending on your Abacus license, how many threads you can use, depending on your computational um, power, you're not going to be able to run this module as being all flexible. So what we do uh, in the industry is to use full vehicle rigid body model to generate loads and then perform single component of analysis using inertia relief. Okay, so for the for this mechanism, the idea is the same. We can use this module to make it go through some specific events such as this grabbing something in the ground and then putting it in another place. And then we can generate uh, the loads for this event at each component of this mechanism. And then we can module, so for example, let me isolate arm one. This is one of the, the rigid bodies that I have. And then I can create a module that has only this component. And I can apply the loads generated by this event for the most critical moment. And we can perform a stress analysis in this component isolatedly. Okay. So, um, uh, okay, so, well, I guess I have mentioned everything that I wanted. The last thing I want to mention here is that you don't need to have any knowledge in uh, 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 about ENSA or Metapost or Abacus. I'm going to show this tutorial step by step for you that have never heard about ENSA, Abacus, or Metapost. The only thing that I'm not going to teach you is how to install these softwares. This tutorial is not intended to show you how to install these softwares or anything like that. Okay, so you're supposed to have these softwares installed. Maybe you work in a company that has these softwares or something like that. Okay. So, I hope you like it and see you in the next video.